Come on, let's bless the Lord. Let's stand up. Come on, give the Lord a praise offering. Come on, worship his name. <laughs> he is the King of kings. He is the Lord of lords. His name is Jesus. Jesus, come on. Come on, kids in the back. Can't you clap for Jesus? It's his birthday. Can't you say happy birthday to Jesus? Get excited about what Jesus Christ is doing in your lives, what he's done in your lives. 
Hallelujah. Got to learn to praise God and bless God. This young man plays football right here. He's a quarterback at a varsity team. Fans go crazy, huh? You score, you throw. They all go crazy for a football, for a little ball. You know, a thing called football. It's a game. But for our Lord and our Savior, you know, we're all cool and we're all hip. And I can't, if the Raiders are playing, you get all crazy, you know. Get the Rams, you get all crazy. Get the Lakers, you get all crazy for those teams. I know I did. I, and sometimes I still do, you know. We got to learn how to just get excited about Jesus Christ, about that name. That name saved you. That name has redeemed you. That name has restored you. If, if God could change, show you, if he could show you the Mercury's, 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 no, M-R-I-A-L-C-L-E-S, miracles. Miracles. miracles, thank you, miracles. If you could just see the miracles, what God has done in your lives. If you guys could see how beautiful it is, the work of the Lord. I can only testify the goodness of God constantly, you know. Uh, uh, two months, man, two months of this is, I would never even want this on my worst enemy. Never. But God has saw me through it, and I want to encourage you guys to. You guys have been through some stuff. Come on, learn to praise God. Let's praise God. Come on, give God a shout. Yeah. Brianna, come on, you're a Baruch. You got to be loud, girl. You, Amen. Come on, ever you, you got a loud mother. Come on, your mama's loud, girl. Hallelujah. <laughs> Bless the Lord. Can you, can you put up uh, Isaiah 9, 6 for me? Isaiah 9, 6, if you can put that up for me. Hallelujah. This is who we're talking about. Can you put it in New, uh, New King James Version, please? I like New King. Those are all good commentaries. Those aren't, those aren't the Bible. That's commentary. I want you guys to know that. The Passion is all commentary. The New, li uh, new, leading, new li Living uh, Translation is all commentary. It's a man's, it's a my, uh, a man's uh, uh, thoughts and interpretation of, of, the, of the Bible, okay? So I want you guys to know that. Don't, don't take it for, you know, oh, that's what it is. No, the Word of God is, is His Word. Amen? We got to know that. You got to know that. I've crossed out many commentaries when I read it like, nope, I don't agree with that. And I just cross that out in my, in my notes, in my Bibles, my store Bible, my uh, study Bibles. But here it says, for unto us is a child born, given to us. Unto us a son is given, a divine being, Jesus, God in the flesh. He gave himself to us. Amen. And the government will be upon his shoulders. The morals, the values, the laws of the land are all be done by him. Every law that we have here is because of the uh, Ten Commandments and because of God's word. And we have to learn how to stand on the, God, the word of God. Amen. And his name will be called Wonderful. This is how you should call him when... When you praise God, these are some of the uh, uh, names you can use. Father, you're wonderful. You're my counselor. He's the one that leads you and leads you to the safety. Amen. You're mighty God. You're an everlasting father. You are the prince of peace. This is how we should worship God with his names. Amen. This is what the Bible calls them. So when I say praise God, you can say, you're wonderful, Lord. You're my counselor. You have taught me. You have instructed me in the ways to go. To go, I didn't know how to live as a Christian. I didn't know how to live a life until I met Jesus Christ. And he instructs us. And he leads our, our steps. Amen? We're, we're, we're led by the Lord Jesus Christ. And I want you guys to know that. We're going to open up in prayer. And uh, I just want you guys to open up your hearts. Open up your hearts, open up your minds to what the Spirit of God is saying. Every one of you, don't look around. A lot of you guys, I watch you guys on live streaming. 
you guys look at everybody but Jesus. You guys are, your kids are playing. I see, I see the little girls, the same girls, always playing. While, the, while the, uh, uh, the man is ministering the word of God, you're playing. You guys are all messing around right here. Like, oh, my God. Man. I know I'm going to get in trouble. because This guy just coming back, and he's already on us. No, there's, not, there's order. There's theory, the order, and, and I don't know the other word. The way we should be living here in Christ. There's a way we should be living for Christ. We should honor God. Amen. We're in his house. Amen. If you ever come to my house and you disrespect my house, I'm going to let you know you're disrespecting my house. Do you know, if you take off your shoes and start putting your feet on the sofas and put your feet on, the, on my uh, table in the middle and stuff like that, I'm like, nah, nah, nah. It don't work like that. I don't, I, I don't, you could probably do it at your house, but not at my house. You know, you can't cuss in my house. You can't drink. People say, oh, can I have a beer at your house? You can have it at your house, but you can't have it at my house. Yeah. You know, you can cuss all you want to cuss. You want to see that, those nasty movies? At your house, right. not my house. Amen. And this is how it is. This is the house of God. Amen. We're to honor God. It's a holy place. Amen. Amen. We're to love on the Lord. He loves you. Thank you even when we didn't even love ourselves. Yes. I didn't even love myself. Stuff I was putting in my bodies and things I was doing, I needed Jesus. So I just want to encourage you guys with that. When you come into the house of God, it ain't to joke around and play around. It's not. It's not to be on your phones. Turn off your phones because if I see it, I'm going to walk up to you and grab your phone. And then I'll give it to your parent. Because that will embarrass your parent before it will embarrass you. So don't, don't be on your phones. If you talk to me while, say I'm having a conversation with the Adrena and you begin to get on your phone and talk on it and text and all that, you're disrespecting me now. So you're not even looking at me eye to eye. You know where we come from. It's eye to eye, right, baby? Respect me. We're going to talk eye to eye, you know? And that's how it should be. And that's how it should be in the house of God. We should be focused on the cross. A man named Jesus gave his life for us. And today we celebrate his life, his birth. It may not be the day that he was born. It may not be the time. And I, I've already heard it all from people and still hear it right now. Because we have Christmas trees up here and people talk about our church. I'm not celebrating a Christian. I'm not a, 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 a Christmas tree. I'm not celebrating the lights. I'm not celebrating the children. I'm celebrating Jesus Christ. The birth of Christ. Amen. That's what we celebrate. Do we celebrate our children? We do. We do. But Christ is first. Always. It's not worried about, don't, don't be concerned about the gifts. The kids are going to have, how many gifts did you have? I mean, how many did they give you? Like 10, 15? Huh? How many did you have under that tree? All kinds, huh? Can't even count them. You know? Yeah. And they don't really need them, Right? Most of them don't need stuff. They already got every. I know my kids got everything they need. Right? Your kids have everything they need. They don't. All they need is food. Feed me. Right, Mel? Feed me. Yeah. <laughs> but we need Jesus in our lives. He's the gift. Amen. He gives life. Amen? And there's no one greater than the name of Jesus Christ. So I want you guys to remember that. Even you young kids, remember that. We're going to get off our phone right now. We're going to get off our phone right now. Yeah, we're just going to turn it off, put it in our pocket. Don't put it in your hand. Because it's just, I will, I will do that, what I just did right now. I'll walk up to you. If you're on your phone, I will walk up to you. I've done it many, many times. Many times. Respect. Honor. God. So, Father, we bless you and we thank you for this day. This is the day that you have made and we're going to rejoice and we're going to be glad in it. Father, I thank you for the life that you've given us. The sacrificial life of Jesus Christ, the Lamb of God, who came to take away all the sins away from the world, Lord God. We thank you for the healing. We thank you for the sound mind, Father. We thank you that we've been delivered from the hand of the enemy, Father. Now we walk in the light. 
the marvelous light of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father, for the truth that lives within us, Lord, the Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us, that leads us to the path of righteousness where there is no end. Just goes on and on and on until we see you face to face. My Father, I pray for every family here, every, me uh, every member of Turning Point Fellowship. I pray for every child, Father, for every youth. I pray that their eyes and their hearts will be open to the salvation of Jesus Christ. I pray that you would speak to them wherever they go, Lord God. Wherever they may be, I pray that you would speak to them, Lord. And as we sit in your presence, I pray, Father, for deliverance. I pray for healing. I pray for leading and guidance, Lord. The guidance of the Holy Spirit that you would speak to us and we would know the truth and the truth would set us free. I thank you, Father, for those that are on their way right now, Lord. We say no accidents, no breakdowns, no flat tires. Father, not even a ticket. Just a safe passage to and from this place. Father, and as the Admana gives the word out, Lord God, let her give it out of her heart. Out of the abundance of her life that you've given her. That you shared with her, now she will share with us, Lord. I pray that we receive that we receive what you have for us, what we yearn for, Lord. We yearn for a new life, a new way of life, Lord God. So I pray for the strength, the courage to continue to move forward and go forward. I pray, Father, over this church, Turning Point Fellowship, in Jesus' name. And everyone said, amen. amen. Hallelujah. Get ready to enter in. Come on. Come before him with a heart of gratitude right now. A joyful heart.
Begin to thank you right there where you're at. Hallelujah. Begin to praise his name right there where you're at. Yes. Hallelujah. Let your praises come out. Let your praises come out. Yes. Hallelujah. Father. We're so thankful to be here, Father. Yes. Exalting your holy name, Father Lord. Yes. We're grateful, Father, for what you've done in our lives, Father. We thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. yes, let the heart of gratitude come. The heart of gratitude. Some of us shouldn't be here today. But look where he has you. Yes, Father. Gracias, Señor.
Oh, your mercy never fails me. All my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. I love your voice. I love your voice. You have led me through the fire in darkest nights. You are close like no other. I've known you as a father. I've known you as a friend. I have lived in the goodness.
Father, I know you have a song of gratitude deep in your heart right there. I know you have a heart of gratitude deep in your heart right there. Let your worship come out. He's listening to you right now. Let this be your day, the day that your heart just rejoices in him right now. Thanking him. Father, thank you that you have us here, Father. That you're taking care of our families, Father. That I made it this far, Lord. I thank you, Father, that you have kept me healthy, Father. You have healed my heart, Father. You have heal my mind father my thoughts lord you have restored my family lord i thank you father lord let the heart of gratitude come out let that joy of gratitude come out sing praises to his name hallelujah for he is worthy for he is holy for he is holy porque el santo el es digno Digno de ser alabado y glorificado. Sing praises to his name. Come on. Let the fire burn within you. Let the fire burn within you for he has been so good to you. He has been so good to you. Thank you. Thank you, Abba. Thank you, Yeshua. You give life, you are love, you bring light to the darkness, you give hope, you restore every heart that it is
This is, this is why we're here. As I was sitting in the back, I could just picture the Magi coming to worship this child, this Savior that, they, that they've heard of, that was prophesied their entire lives. And as they came to him, they began to give him gifts, whatever it was they had. I want to encourage you, whatever you have, whatever's in your heart, to give to your Father, to give to the one who has saved you, the one who hung on a cross for you, bring it to Him.
because we're going to pour out our praise. We're going to worship to that song one more time. I don't want you to leave here without an opportunity to leave your praises at the foot of your Father. What better place to be? You see, by you being here this morning, it shows me where your priority is. It's to worship your Father on the day that we choose to celebrate His birth. So don't be confused. It's okay. We pour out our praise. We pour out our praise. We pour out You're strong tower. just today but every day we honor you we worship you we love you Jesus we love you Jesus let me hear you say it I love you Jesus I love you Jesus we love you Lord and we are here for you so we ask that you would receive this praise this worship as a sweet smelling aroma into your nostrils, Father, that you would smile down upon us, your children who love you. <laughs> we thank you. We bless you. In your name, and the church and I said, amen, amen, amen and amen. You may have your seats, family. May have your seats in the presence of our Father. Hallelujah. Beautiful. The presence of the Lord is beautiful. And we're going to continue in worship with our tithes and offerings. And um, before we begin, amen, amen. Let's give it a hand clap for our tithes and offerings. Before we hand out our tithing envelopes and before we put up the number on the screen I just have a scripture that I would like to share and uh, me and pastor were comparing notes last night no, I'm just just joking 
But it was the same scripture that I wanted to share. Amen. And really quick, Isaiah was a prophet. He didn't get to see Jesus born. So this message here is a message of hope. What, what, you're, what we're going to read right now is a message of hope. And we are that hope, family. <laughs> we are that miracle. Amen. So let's read. Isaiah 9, 6. For unto us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be upon his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace, of the greatness of his government and peace, there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom. Amen. So I want you guys to understand that, that this... This is a message of hope. He never got to see the Prince of Peace born. But he, he believed so much that what did he do? He wrote it down. He spoke it. So today, right, we celebrate the day of our Savior's birth, right, which is the greatest gift of all. The Father sent the Son down for us. So as we give this morning... I don't want you to give with a dollar amount in your mind, but give from your heart. Give from your heart because you're, give from your heart, family, because that's what the Lord looks at. He looks at the heart. Amen. So give in Jesus' name. Envelope, if you need an envelope, raise your hand. And if you do not uh, have cash or a check to give this morning, please. Text the word GIVE to the number 714-477-7736. Once again, that number, you text the word GIVE to 714-477-7736. And for those of you that are watching, to those of you who send your tithe in through the mail, we want to thank you. We receive it. They are coming in, and we want to thank you for that. Even though you're not present, you still honor and are obedient to your Father by sending your tithes in, and we appreciate that. In Jesus' name. Go ahead and give, family. Don't forget to pray over your, your offering in Jesus' name. I've heard a thousand stories of what they think you're like and I've heard the tender whispers of love in the dead of night and you tell me that you're pleased and that I'm never
we can get grab these. Amen. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. If you would all stretch your hands forward and come into an agreement, amen. Father, we just thank you and praise you for these tithes, these offerings, Lord. And we pray that you would give the leadership, the elders, Father God, pastor, the discernment, the wisdom, Father, to distribute, allocate these funds, Father. We pray that it would increase, Father, that we would increase in a harvest like your word says in 2 Corinthians, Father, 9, that you would increase a harvest of righteousness in this house. We pray for 100% tithers and givers, Father God. We thank you for their lives right now. So we thank you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen, amen, and amen. You guys may be seated. We have a few announcements, amen? A few announcements, a few things. You guys may be released. Jesus' name. Amen. Let's give the worship team a round of applause. Amen. Still get nervous. I don't know. Amen. Okay, so we have there's a few things going on we, we want you guys to know about and remember, put it in the computer. Amen. So next Saturday, which is the 31st, we will be here. At from 3 p.m. to 5 p.m., December 31st. Amen. We're gonna have uh, some some refreshments. We encourage you guys to bring out some finger foods, um, some pastries, coffee. Uh, we'll have some coffee, some hot chocolate, but bring some out as well so we can celebrate together. Amen. And uh, if you want a place to come and fellowship for that, this is the place. Amen. So we encourage you guys to come out. Amen. <clears throat> so we're going to be, what's going to take place, we're going to be celebrating the Lord. Amen. As we always do. We're going to celebrate. We're going to praise and worship. And we're going to thank him for what he's done in 2022. And we're going to praise him for what he's going to do in 2023. Amen. Because mighty things are going are gonna to take place in our lives. So, so that's what we're going to do. And if you would like, because I know a few of us, uh, it's gonna, it says three to five, but you know how we do it. We're going to be here, and we're going to be here, and we're going to be here. So if you want to bring out some board games or whatever it is, bring them out. We're going we're gonna to have a good time, family. We're family. We're going to have a good time, and we will be here. So don't hesitate to bring your board games or whatever it is you got to, to, uh, to share and come on down. Amen. And another thing, um, do your service is Sunday, January 1st. We're going to be ringing in the, uh, the New Year's Day here at 10 a.m., regular time, regular service. Amen. Come on out. Bring your family. Because, you know, you know, the uh, people like to say, oh, my New Year's resolution this, my New Year's resolution that. But if you introduce them to Jesus Christ, they ain't going to need no more resolutions. Amen. Because Jesus Christ is the resolution. He finished it all. Amen. So there's that. And then um, so the 8th, January 8th is going to be our potluck family. We're going to push our potluck back to January 8th. Amen. So uh, just so you're aware, that's what's going to happen there. And also January 7th will be our men's meeting. Amen. Amen. Man of a higher standard. We'll be sending those flyers out to you guys this week. Amen. So uh, be ready. Man, invite somebody. Invite somebody. Like, like uh, Brother Ryan says, there's a power in an invite. Amen. So now what we'll do is we're going to go forward. Uh, Sister uh, Cherish Aldama it has a song that she will like to bless their congregation with. Amen.
A couple came to Bethlehem Expecting child They searched the end To find a place for you We're coming soon There was no room for them to stay So in a manger filled with hay God's only son was born The shepherds left their flocks by night to see this baby wrapped in light. A host of angels led them all to you. It was just as the angels said, you'll find a man, a major bed, Emmanuel and say. A star shone bright up in the east To Bethlehem the wise men three Came many miles and journeyed long for you And to that place at which you were The frankincense and golden myrrh They gave to you and cried out I know you came to rescue me. This baby boy would grow to be a man and one day die for me and you. My sins would drive the nails in you. The rugged cross was my cross too. Still every breath you drew. Hallelujah. Wow. That was beautiful. And we might not and we might think that that was a technical difficulty or something, but I believe that the Lord wanted us to hear it a cappella. Amen. So we could feel it. Cuz it's not about the music, it's about the praise that comes out of our mouths. Amen. Amen. So go ahead, you may be seated. The children will be staying in, but the youth, Pastor Fernando and Reina, We'll be taking you guys out so you can, you can go with them now. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah, hallelujah. And at this time, I'd like to welcome up our speaker for this morning, Sister Celia Padilla. Amen? Let's give her a hand. setting up. You may be seated. Good morning. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Am I on? <clears throat> okay. Wonderful. Thank you. This excuses the guys or I don't know if you guys can see that. 
excuse me. <laughs> All right, wonderful. Thank you. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Well, <laughs> for a while I thought Pastor Angel and, and Thomas were going to preach my message. <laughs> I'm serious. Yes, yes. And that's exactly what I prayed for. I said, Lord, everything in the service jowls together. Everything, from the moment that we open up to the closing, that everything. Holy Spirit, what do you want to say today? What do you want to say today? The thing is, what he wants to say is, unto us a child was born. He ain't a child anymore. He's seated at the right hand of the Father, resurrected in his glorified body. But from the very, very beginning of time, specifically in the Garden of Eden, when Adam and Eve, they sinned, God came into, Jesus himself came into the garden. And he realized something was off. So he begins to, so of course, you know, the blame game, Adam, you know, blame Eve and, and Eve, you know, they're blaming one another. Anyway, in chapter 3, Jesus curses the serpent, Adam, and Eve. Pronounces what was going to happen as a result and to the serpent, he says, I'm going to put enmity between you and the woman. Her seed is going to bruise your head. You're going to bite his heel. Talking about Jesus. Think about this. Jesus himself, because he was in the garden, was prophesying that, hey, I'm going to come and bruise your head. Because it was him in the garden that came in. Abraham prophesied. Through time, there were prophecies that the coming of the king was going to come. A redeemer was going to come. Abraham, Jacob, Moses. To God, he told Moses, I'm going to raise up a prophet from among you, Israelites. To Balaam, Isaiah, the prophets. There were three prophecies from Isaiah. Jeremiah, Micah, and Zephaniah. Zechariah, I should say. Through time, there was prophetic words in history announcing the coming of a redeemer, announcing the coming of someone that would redeem back mankind. Because the minute Adam and Eve fell, we came short of God's glory. Sin cannot come into the presence of God. There is no sin in heaven. So the miracle was not his birth. Because he was born in the same fashion that you and I are born, correct? His miracle was in his conception. Let me explain. <clears throat> in the natural, okay, a, a, a male provides his DNA and the, the, the hormone I mean, not the hormone, the chromosome, the gene chromosome of the sex of the child. And the woman provides her, her, her part. And of course, fertilization takes place. That's in the natural, correct? Biology. Biology 101, first semester. Okay. So fertilization takes place. Now, what happened when the angel Gabriel told her that she was going to conceive she goes, well, how is that possible? I'm not even married yet. In and of ourselves, women were not created to be able to fertilize and conceive by, their, by themselves. We cannot. That's not how we were created. So in the natural, that seems virtually impossible. How is that going to happen? What God happened, the Bible says that when the Holy Mary says, well, how is this going to be? And the angel told her, the Holy Spirit is going to come over you. The Bible says it's going to overshadow you. So in that moment when the Holy Spirit overshadowed her, God the Father put in his DNA into Mary. Following me? He put his DNA into Mary. That alone is supernatural. That alone is supernatural. His DNA. 
He provided the, 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 the gene, determined there was going to be a male, of course. But he provided his DNA. So that Jesus was both the son of God and both the son of man. He was God, but he was also man himself. Now, had, G had God the Father provided already a fertilized egg and inserted that in Mary, that would have made Mary a surrogate mother. Isn't that what happens in the natural? You know, they put it, insert into a woman of fertilized eggs so that they can be a surrogate? That's in the natural, right? But God didn't do that. Because if he had done that, then therefore God, Jesus would have been entirely God and not human himself. Following me. So Jesus, God the Father, inserted his DNA when the Holy Spirit came over her. That is the miracle. Because there is no other person, there is no other God that could have actually done that. That's the miracle. And we, from conception to his death and resurrection, everything about Jesus was a miracle. It defied the laws of, natural, of gravity. It defies the law of human nature. Everything. Why? Because he's God himself. He's the son of the living God. Amen. Unto us a child was born. Unto us a child was given. Jesus is the creator. John chapter 1, it says that all things were made through him, and without him was not anything made on earth or had been made. In other words, he created everything. So think about this. Jesus the creator became a created being among his creation. He created everything. So everything that he created, he lived among us. He lived here. That's an that's, that's a, a, a amazing thing to even think about. The creator became a created being who dwelled among who create, what he created. And that's the reason, another reason why all of creation had to obey. When he was in the storm in the boat, and, those, and, the, and the disciples were crying because they, they were scared because of the, the storm. What did he say to the wind? Peace, be still. He calmed the very thing that he created, the winds, he calmed them down. He spoke to them. He spoke to the very things that he created. He defied that. Now Jesus, according to Micah 5, 2, it says that Jesus was going to be born out of Bethlehem. Now, Bethlehem is in the city of, of, um, of Judea. Judea is an area and a region where they would uh, shepherd a lot of sheep, okay? They would have, that was their thing, you know, hence the reason David, remember David? He was a shepherd taking, tending to his father's sheep. Now, those sheep that were herded in, in, in Judea those were the sheep that were taken to the temple in Jerusalem to offer as a sacrifice. They would ship them over to Jerusalem from Judea. It's not a coincidence. Jesus, the Lamb of God, born in Bethlehem, ultimately died and sacrificed in Jerusalem became the Lamb of God without spot and without wrinkle. Everything from Genesis to Revelation, everything is prophetic. Everything ties into Jesus. Everything ties into him. Why? Because he is the word. He is the word. Now Jesus himself was one of the humblest persons that ever walked the earth. He was unassuming. He was born in a stable, 
in a place where they kept animals. How unassuming is that? Rather than him being born in a palace. The king of king was not born in a palace. He was born in a stable where they kept animals. See, he never drew attention to himself. A person that is humble never draws attention to themselves. They're unassuming. What he did, the signs and miracles and the wonders that he did, did draw attention. Yes. But he didn't do it to draw the attention to himself. Does that make sense? So a humble person is unassuming. Doesn't draw attention to themselves. Because it's not about them. It's all about God. In everything. Jesus, everything that he did, everything that he said was all because of what the Father, what he saw the Father do and say. Everything that he did. He had to, you know, every time he got away in prayer, what do you think he got his orders from? He had to connect with the Father. He had to, he had to be in communion with the Father. How much more us? Isaiah the prophet, Thomas shared this a little bit, but Isaiah prophesied this, prophesied 700 years before Christ, about 700 years before Christ was born. That's when all his writings were made, about 700 years. Now, <clears throat> Isaiah chapter 9, verse 6, we've already read it. <laughs> For unto us a child is born. Unto us a child is given, and the government shall be upon his shoulder, and his name shall be called Wonderful, Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. That word government, it means an empire. It means to prevail, to have power as a prince. Now, in the Old Testament, the Bible says that when the priest would carry the Ark of the Covenant, when they were traveling, they would carry it on their shoulders. It signified authority. It rested on them. So when we read, the, the, the government shall be upon his shoulders, means that he walked in that authority, carried that authority as the Prince of Peace. He carried it. He walked in it. It was, it, he carried it. He didn't have to act it or pretend it. He just, he, he just functioned in it. He just carried it. He had that authority. The word wonderful, if you can bring up that slide. I'm going to go break down each one of these words because they're very, very important. Because who he is. <laughs> wonderful. Right below, right below the word wonderful, you hear the Hebrew, the Hebrew concordance for those of you that like to study, and the Hebrew word. This is what it means. Marvelous. <laughs> to be surpassing. And as I'm reading this, isn't Jesus all these things? Separate by distinguishing action. To be beyond one's power. To be difficult to understand. Now how many of you know that Jesus, it was hard for the people to understand him? Not the people, but the Pharisees. And he spoke in what? In parables. And a lot of times, they didn't understand what the parables meant. He had to explain it to his disciples. Was he difficult to understand? Yes. Separate, to separate as an offering. Didn't Jesus himself become the offering? That's what that word wonderful is. So when we say that word wonderful, it encompasses all these things. He did extraordinary, hard, and difficult things. For example, in Acts chapter 10, verse 38, it says in the tra uh, Passion Translation, it says, Jesus of Nazareth, was anointed by God with the Holy Spirit 
with great power, and he did wonderful things for others and divinely healed all who were under the tyranny or the oppression of the devil. For God anointed him. He did wonderful things. He did difficult things. Things that nobody had ever seen before. Counselor. To advise, consult, to give counsel. Purpose. Devise a plan. He gives you purpose. Jeremiah 29, 11, it says, For I know the plans that I have for you, for good and not evil, a future and a hope. See, God's plans are not evil for you. He gives you a purpose. You were born on purpose, with purpose, for his purpose. Every single one of you. Every single one of you. You wouldn't be here if you weren't. Definition of a counselor means to consult, to exchange, to to deliberate, to advise. Isn't the word of God, doesn't the word of God give us those things? It leads us, it guides us, it gives us counsel, it directs us, it shows us what we need to do, what we don't need to do. That word, the word of God is our counsel. He speaks to us. He is the word of God. And we have it in letter form. Jesus. The Bible. He desires relationship with us. Okay, because in that relationship, doesn't he, one-on-one, doesn't he talk to you? Doesn't he comfort you? Doesn't he encourage you? Doesn't he say, "Uh -uh uh-uh-uh, okay, go ahead. I know he does with me. Okay, stay here, stay here, stay here. He wants and desires relationship. Not in a religious form, but personally, intimately. If you can bring up the next slide. He is El Gibor, mighty God. Mighty, mighty God. He's a mighty God. He is strong, he's brave, he's mighty, he's valiant, he's a warrior, he's a champion, a chief. Come on. He's a giant. See, in the days of Jesus, there were zealots. Because they were being oppressed by the Romans, and there were zealots in the times of Jesus because they believed that Jesus was going to come as, as a warrior, as a soldier to overthrow the Romans. Many times we read the word or we get a prophetic word and we misunderstand it in our, neutral, in our natural mind, in our natural thinking. But God's ways are higher than ours. The way that he thinks is no way the way that we think. What we think he says, he totally means something different. Now, I don't know about you, but I have had some prophetic words. It's like, God, that does not make any sense to me at all. I don't know how you're going to do that. How is that going to come to pass? No, I don't think so. I don't think that's it. And you know what? Down the line, yep. Oh, yeah, there we go. There was that word. Oh, yeah, I'm living that word. I'm walking through that word. But it didn't come the way that you expect it to come. Our job is, okay, to continue to hold on to that that prophetic, any promise that you receive from God. I want to encourage you, whether it's personally or whether in the word of God, when a scripture jumps out at you, that becomes rhema to you, you hold on to that word because you war with that word. You don't let go of that word. And whatever circumstances you're going through, you hold on to that word. Mighty God. He is the Lord of hosts, the Lord of heaven's armies. Did you know that that phrase the Lord of hosts or the Lord of heaven's armies is mentioned in the King James Bible 272 times. I should say something. The Lord of heaven's armies. 
Psalms 24, verse 8. He said, who is the king of glory? The Lord strong, mighty the Lord, invincible in battle. Open up, you ancient gates. Open up the ancient doors and let the king of glory enter in. Who is the king of glory? The Lord of heaven's armies. He's the king of glory. He is mighty indeed. Everlasting father. Word everlasting means continuous, perpetual. There is no, there is no, it's a continuous existence. It's everlasting. Same yesterday, same today, same tomorrow. He's the great I am. He was a great I am yesterday, he's a great I am today, and he's going to be the great I am tomorrow. Everlasting. He changes not. He changes not. And I want to encourage you with this. God does not lie. He does not back up on his word. If it's in the word, you can bet your bottom dollar it will come to pass. Our job is to trust and to believe in him, in what he said. That's our job. How he does it, that's up to him. So don't worry about how it's going to happen. Your job is just to walk in faith. That's a challenge. Actually, you know, it is a challenge. It is. Because your faith is being, it's being stretched. Prince of Peace. He is Sar Shalom. He's the ruler, he's the leader, he's the captain. Of completeness, of soundness, of welfare. That word Shalom speaks of peace. Everything that is there, the idea that is given is the idea that nothing is missing. Nothing is broken. Third John says that he desires for us to prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. He wants nothing in our lives to be missing, to be broken. He wants us to be full and complete and whole. He gives you the peace. He gives you the tranquility. Whatever it is that you need. You need that peace? He'll give it to you. Jesus says, I give you my peace I leave with you, not as the world does. You can be in the midst of a storm, chaotic chaos can be happening in your home, at your job, at your school, but you have that internal peace that God is in control and that he's got you. You can't buy that. The world can't give you that. The world cannot give you that. The Bible says that God is love. In 1 John 4, 8, it says that he is love. Love gave. John 3, 16, which we all know. For God so loved the world that he... What did he do? Gave. 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 Love gave. The kingdom of God is about giving. We give out of love or what because love. We just took our offering. And, and Thomas shares something we give out of our heart. When we give our, 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 our service, our service who to our, the Lord, our, our, um, our giving and our offering, you don't get because they're asking. You don't get, don't get because you have to. You give because you love God and you want to honor God. That should be our motive for giving all the time. And not just only an offering, but love gave. Love became the gift. Jesus is that gift. Now I'm going to draw your attention over to these boxes. I don't know if you could see them. I'll try to get out of the way. Now, each one of these boxes are colored. Each one of these boxes, biblically, have a significance in Scripture, each one of these colors. And they all tied into Jesus. The red, the blood of Jesus. He shed blood for you and for me. Silver, I don't know if you could see that. 
the silver. The silver speaks of redemption. In the Old Testament, the uh, parts of what was in the Ark of the uh, in the Tabernacle of David, some of the items were made out of silver. It meant and it represented redemption. Green represents life. I mean, just go outside. Everything that God created, you know, the trees, the flowers, the grass, everything is what? Green. It speaks of life. Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the giver of life. Blue speaks of royalty. He came from heaven. The heavens. Nope, I'm sorry. Blue speaks of the heavens. Purple speaks of royalty. Gold speaks of his deity. And I don't, I don't know if it was in Isaiah or in Ezekiel where it says where he had the vision and he saw the Son of Man and the colors that he described of what he looked like is uh, one of the words that is used is amber. Closest to amber is gold. It speaks of his deity and a lot of the Ark of the Covenant. What color was the Ark of the Covenant? Gold. It speaks of his deity. Love gave. Amen. Unto us a child is born. Jesus became that gift. He became that gift. Now, we have a choice to accept that gift or to deny that gift or reject that gift. Love gave. The baby gave his life. Love gave. The key to heaven is accepting the gift of redemption. It's the only, it, it, if you can't get into heaven, that's because you didn't, you know, you rejected it. But love gave. It is up to us to, to take it, choose to take it. But walk in it. Remember I said earlier, you know, uh, the Bible, well, first of all, the Bible says that if you've received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, okay, that's just a stepping stone. But we have to work out our salvation. Remember I said earlier is that sin cannot enter into the kingdom of God. That means daily we have to make sure and check our heart and make sure there is no sin. I always tell my grandbabies, I tell my babies, I go, Sin, you can't go to heaven. You've got sin in your heart. So every time this disobey, every time we go through a little thing, okay, so what do you need to do? You need to say you're sorry. You need to say you're sorry and ask Jesus to forgive you because we can't go to heaven. We've got sin in our heart, right? The Bible says in Romans 3.23 that we've all sinned. We have all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Also in Romans 6, the wages of sin is death. The penalty of sin is death. Hence the reason why Jesus, he became that penalty for you and I. Because the Bible says in Hebrews that without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. In other words, someone had to pay the price in blood which is why God told Moses that there needed to be blood sacrifices in the temple for the remission of the people's sin. Well, the covering, actually. But you have a choice. This is your gift. Have you taken this gift? Love gave. Unto you a child is born. Unto you a child was given. Please stand up. Please stand up. I don't know where you're at in your walk with God, or do you have a walk with God? Because we don't. We need to be online. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> I don't know if anybody got that one. <laughs> oh, I was like, who's that? <laughs> I'm so sorry. I apologize. Hallelujah. I don't know where you're at in your walk with God, but I want everybody to close your eyes right now. I want you to begin to search your heart. You have an opportunity to get yourself right, right now. 
You have a choice to reject that gift, to receive that gift, the gift of salvation. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, the Bible, I just read a scripture. I just said, we've all sinned. All of us have blown it. None of us is right. But we can come right by receiving the gift of redemption, the gift of forgiveness of sins. That's our starting point. If you've never received Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and would love to invite him into your life, because he changes, he transforms your life. You're never the same. If you could just raise your hand. Okay, I see those hands. Now, if you have not been walking right with God, you've been missing it quite a bit, Maybe you've kind of like backed off and you're not really in communion with God like you should be. If you're not moving forward, you're moving backwards in God. Perhaps you may have missed it and not taken care of business with God and would like to get yourself right with God. Raise your hand. Hallelujah. I'm going to lead you in a prayer. And let's everybody join in together with those. And what you're doing is that you are surrendering your life to him. What you are doing is, is, is God, I give you my life, that you take control over it. I surrender to you. Not my will, but your will, God. That's what you're saying. Say this with me. Say, dear God. Everyone, those that raised your hand and those that wanted to receive Jesus and those of you that are going to uh, rededicate your life to him. This is, dear God, I've recognized that I have fallen short and I need a savior. I receive Jesus Christ as my savior. And I ask for the forgiveness of my sins, my shortcomings, for not moving forward as I should. I give you my life. I surrender my life to you. Let not my will be done no longer, but your will be done. And Satan, I renounce you for my life. I detach myself from you. I'm a child of God. I am no longer yours. Hands off of me. In Jesus' name. I receive your love, Father. I receive your forgiveness. I receive restoration. And I thank you that, Father God, you love me so much that you gave your precious gift unto me and I receive it and I rejoice in it in Jesus name amen let's clap praise God amen I just want to add one more thing to pray for the parents I just want to share this that um you know, it was a lot of pressure on Mary to carry the Son of God in her womb to bring up a child. And I remember the Bible says that there was a time when Mary and Joseph lost Jesus. They didn't know where he was. Has any besides myself lost a child, you know, that couldn't find him? <laughs> My son's here, Josh. And I had... And uh, we were not very far, and, and he ran off. And I ran out, and she, my wife was at the gate. And she goes, what's wrong? I go, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. <laughs> and we finally found him, like, about 30 minutes later at a stand, right, something like that. But we were praying. But then what's so interesting, and I, this is for you parents, okay, is that Mary and Joseph lost Jesus for three days. See, my wife and I, we were able to pray in the name of Jesus, Lord, find our son. 
What does Mary and Joseph do when um, God, you know, the son that you asked us to watch, we don't know where he's at, <laughs> you know? So you can imagine their mindset. But parents, you need to know Jesus, especially as your peace. Because there's a lot of pressure as parents. I, I mean, when my wife and I, they're like, how much do we have? And, you know, we want to get, like Pastor Ray said, we want to give the kids all the gifts we can get them. But then you're running short. And then the pressure of the world and the pressure that comes upon us as parents to give the kids the best. Am I the only one that ever had to go through that? And you look. And I just sense as my wife was ministering is that, there's a lot of pressure on parents right now. And God doesn't want you to be pressured because it's not about the gifts for your kids. It's about Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. That's the greatest gift you can give your kids. It's for you, first of all, to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior and then them to follow. Don't let the pressure get to you because, let's face it, kids are resilient. I used to tell... Uh, I promise, this is the last one. I used to tell my kids, well, when I was growing up, Pastor Angel, I, all my, my grandmother got me was underwear. I think I'm going to go buy you underwear for Christmas. <laughs> they go, no, Dad, please, please, you know. But that's what it is. But look where I'm at today. See, don't worry about your kids as much as your mindset and let the peace of God enjoy Christmas. But the truly, true meaning of Christmas is Jesus Christ was born. And like I said the other day, it's like it didn't matter whether he was born on December 25th or July 4th. The bottom line is he was born. Amen. We don't have to argue about that because people want to argue while he wasn't born then. So parents, this prayer is for you. The kids are resilient. They'll get over it. You know, get them a pair of underwear, and hey, that's what Pastor Eric got. I'm giving you underwear now. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for every parent, every grandparent that has been pressured because of the way the world is. You got to buy all these gifts. You got to find the money, go into debt. But I ask right now that the Prince of Peace would fall upon every parent knowing it's not about the gifts, but the true one and only gift, Jesus Christ. And I release the peace of God, the shalom over every parent, every adult, Lord, in the name of Jesus. That the peace of God that surpasses all understanding will come upon them. That they'll enjoy Christmas. They'll celebrate Christmas. They'll celebrate the birth of Jesus. And as they do, Lord joy and peace will be their portion. Thank you, Father, for their kids. For we know that this youth group, these kids at Turning Point Fellowship are going to be mighty in the kingdom of God. I declare that in the name of Jesus. They shall be the Davids. They shall be the Elijahs and Elishas. They shall be the Samuels, Lord, that will carry on your mission in Jesus' name. And Father, thank you for Pastor Angel. Lord, Sandra, we thank you for this man of God. We thank you for the health and the strength. And we speak to his mind right now. For the peace of God that surpasses all understanding. For this man of God has a great mission to carry out. For even as Joshua had a great mission, so does Pastor Angel. You've called him, you've anointed him, and I declare in the name of Jesus, as we lay hands upon him, he is healed completely. He's going to run without growing weary. A peace of God shall surpass understanding be upon him. Joy, joy, and rivers of life Rivers of joy shall flow out of his belly in the name of Jesus. We say it is done. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. Praise God. We love you.
Have a great weekend, and we'll see you next no, Thursday night, Bible study. Praise God. Amen. You're dismissed. Greet one another.